People are now retiring three to four years later than they did three decades ago. Now, why is this happening? And how can this impact you? We're going to unpack all of that on today's episode of The Retire One Show. Hello and welcome to The Retire One Show, the show designed to help you get to retirement, but what do we say most importantly? Stay retired. That's right. I'm your host, Jonathan Rankin. I'm the founder and CEO of Theorem Wealth Management, and I'm joined by my lovely co-host. Hi, I'm Melissa Rankin. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being back here. It's very nice to be back again. And today we've got a great episode, but before we jump into all of that, we don't just want you to subscribe to the channel, right, Mel? Right. There's now a new, exciting newsletter. That's right. Make sure you subscribe to our retirement newsletter. It comes out every single Friday. There's a link right there in the description below. Click the button, subscribe to the newsletter, because we know you're already subscribed to the channel, right? That's that's why you're here. And Some light reading for the weekend. I mean... You know, we try to provide a lot of good content here to help you get to retirement. And today we are talking about why people are delaying retirement. Uh, honestly, when I saw these studies, I was... A little shocked at some of the some of the different numbers. I knew that people were retiring a little later. I just didn't realize the the impact and change. The actual numbers tied to it is kind of crazy. That's right. So let's dive right into, you know, what's going on. So the first one, I, I mean, this for some reason is just it stands out to me. It's so crazy. The average retirement age in the U.S. has increased from fifty seven in nineteen ninety one to sixty one today. I mean, fifty seven. See, and that's the thing. I'm, I was actually shocked by both of these numbers. I was shocked that it was 57 in 1991, but I'm also shocked that it's 61 today. Huh. I think there's something about it being in the 50s and the 60s that makes it so different. Yeah, but in 1991, who was retiring at 57? And I mean, even today, a lot of the people that we talk to, you know, they usually benchmark their retirement around you know, Social Security starting at 62 or 65 is a popular age because of Medicare. Yeah. And very, you know, I, would, I don't want to say rarely, but it's definitely not but the average. I mean, <laughs> it's not the average of what we've seen at, uh, at 61 years old. But if that's what Gallup says, that's what Gallup says. Which actually brings us to the, the next kind of, I guess, fascinating point. <laughs> um, non-retirees target retirement age has also increased from 60 in 1995 to 66. See, that makes more sense that people are expecting that they're going to be retiring at 66. That number to me makes sense. It didn't make sense. They were thinking they were going to retire at 60 back in 1995. 1995. I mean, because that's not that long ago. I mean. No. It, but, you know, maybe because, I mean, and that was even before the tech boom. But interesting that uh, people were thinking they were going to retire at 60. And we're going to jump into some of the reasons and factors why we think uh, think these trends have existed and, and come about. But 66, to me, that seems normal. That does. That seems a little more average. Gallup has also found that retirees' reported retirement age has been about five years younger than non-retirees' expected retirement age. This, this to me, makes sense. We've seen this happen where you know, people think they're going to retire at a certain age, and for some reason, they retire actually earlier than expected. You know, and a lot of that is whether that's health concerns. You, know, you think, I'm going to retire at 65 or 66 in this case, or later and health causes you to step out of the workforce or, you know, we've seen it happen in, I saw it happen in 2008. We've seen it happen in, you know, uh, 2018 and even in the, you know, pandemic where companies pull back, they start laying people off. And fortunately, a lot of, you know, senior employees, they typically will get laid off and just kind of ride off. Into Early their, retirement. That's right. Right off into the retirement sunset before they initially plan to. So there are reasons why, we see people retire earlier than expected. I didn't realize it was five years earlier, but you know, and that's a big jump. It is five a big jump. years. But I think it kind of goes to show this chart that, that you're going to go into a little bit more, but it shows some trends, I mean, since 2002 that are just also shocking. Yeah, I think it's interesting to see that in 2002, 41% of people between the ages of 60 and 64 were retired, and now that's only, thir- that's only 32%. So we've seen a 9% drop in that category. I, I wasn't really shocked by the 55 to 59-year-olds. You know, that, is, that was at 19% of people in 2002 to 2007, and now it's 11%. See, that seems normal for that me. That makes yeah, sense that, to me. That, yeah, that tracks. And maybe, you know, and we'll get into this a little bit, but I wonder if a lot of this is just generational. You know, you think of things happen later in life for, for people uh, nowadays. I mean, you think of, you know, 
our grandparents at the age that they got married or had kids and our parents, you know, the age they had got married and had kids. And then us, the <laughs> age that we got married and had kids and everything seems to be happening later. I think you see that in, you know, different generations, I guess, thinking about, you know, the baby boomer generation, I guess, you know, seeing that that is a shift that we've seen is, is kind of interesting to me. So let's get into some of the actual reasons why this is happening. I mean, we've speculated a little bit about the numbers, but why do you think this is actually happening? So I think there are really four factors that come into play when thinking about why there's this shift in later retirement. Now, there's any study that you find, there's not going to be, here's the one main cause. Here's this exact reason exactly. why this is happening. <laughs> but I think the, the first reason is, the, I would say, the rise of the 401k. You know, this, uh, in 1940, 58% of people had pensions, whereas in 1965, I found a study that said less than 5% of people did. Now, in all honesty, I, I think that 5% is probably a little low, but still, I think the trend shows that, uh, you know, pensions aren't really a thing anymore. But I think that even though pensions aren't really a thing, isn't that just because money's probably shifted and going to, I don't know, 401ks or other company-sponsored plans, I mean, things like that, where the money's still going to the individual, not necessarily via a pension, but it still seems like it's getting there. Yeah, I guess, you know, people are getting, you know, a lot of companies do, you know, they do match in 401k. So there is, you know, I think money going to participants, but the problem is the responsibility is on the participant. There uh, is. Yes, the, the ownership of it. There is. And, you know, you think of if, you know, if your job is to start a company and the company's not saving for your retirement, you have to make that decision to put away your own money and your own money has to go into this account. You have to, then you have to actually invest it. You have to actively do it. I mean, we've seen, we've seen statements of clients that range from a hundred percent in stocks to a hundred percent in cash at various ages. All over the place. And it's because when starting out in a 401k that it's typically self-directed. And so a lot can change, whereas pensions, they were done by the company. They were invested by the company. They, they took care of that. It's kind of like an out-of-sight, out-of-mind savings. It was. And now you look at, I saw this report from the National Institute on Retirement Security that found that 40% of households that were headed by someone between the ages of 55 and 64 had no retirement savings at all. None. Nothing. No, nothing. So whereas you would think that some of these people would have been covered by a pension before, 401ks, that shift from pensions to 401ks, I think that's a very big contributor into why people are making that shift to retire later because the whole responsibility is on them. And that's why you see all these headlines of this retirement crisis that we're going to face in the next, you know, 5, 10, 20 years. You know, it's interesting too that um, kind of to piggyback off of that, when I was doing research for this episode, I came across a study that said um, the guaranteed paychecks of pensions, kind of in that same mind, it guaranteed. I yeah. mean, that in itself, I think, gives people some security and makes them a little bit more comfortable, which I think is interesting because it actually shows that people with 401ks or other plans like that, they're actually retiring one to two years later on average than people who had pensions. I mean, you think about any time we talk to someone who's thinking about retiring, what is their number one concern? That they're going to run, run out, out of money. money. And a lot of that is especially prevalent right now with everything going on in the markets. As you go through bear markets in pensions, that was handled for you. It was guaranteed. You you didn't have to worry about market risk then. I think that's the main takeaway right there, the guaranteed. Yeah. I think for people that you think retirement who wouldn't want to have something guaranteed? I, I wonder, and I, I have no clue on this uh, statistic, but I wonder how many people back in the 80s, 90s, and even 2000s you know, really even paid attention to the stock market. It seems like because of the mm. 401k, now everybody has to focus on what the market's doing because it's the biggest part of their retirement savings now, if they are saving for retirement, because they have to be the ones to put money into the plan and figure out how to invest it. It's at least in the back of their mind somewhere. Yeah. Even if they're not actively watching it, it's there in some way or mm -hmm. some capacity, I guess. Whereas, yeah, you're probably right with the pension. I mean, who cares? <laughs> it's, it's guaranteed. The market can do what it's got to do. That's true. So I do think that the 401k is, to me, the number one factor that's changed the trend of when people retire. But, you know, there are a couple others. I think the number 
two that we want to talk about is Social Security. Mm-hmm. You know, them changing the full retirement age from 65 to 67, and that by default incentivizes people to retire later. Absolutely. And then in the 70s, that's when the delayed credits came about. So you're now even incentivized even more to delay until age 70. And then in the 2000s, in, in 2000, Congress got rid of the earnings test, which was always looked at as a penalty for working later in life. So you've got all these different factors that incentivize you to take Social Security later. Pushing it back and back and back. Yeah. You want to max out your Social Security? What do they say? Delay till 70. So, okay, well, why don't I just work till 70 if that's the case? It's interesting, though, because despite all that, most beneficiaries still claim Social Security before the full retirement age. In 2021, for example, 57% of new beneficiaries were under 66. 57%, over half. I'm going to refer to this as the uh, the J.G. Wentworth, this is the, uh, it's my money, I want it now. (laughs) That's, that, oh, I do remember those commercials. That's the, you know, I, I think it was Montel Williams. It wasn't that him. You know, it's my money. I want it out. I feel like that's the, that's the, you know, that's. The that's, driving force there. Exactly. Everybody had that mentality. Yep. That is it. It's the J.G. Wentworth syndrome that happens with Social Security. <laughs> it's my money. I want it now. But uh, also you see all that fear mongering. And we've talked about this in previous episodes. The Social Security is going away and all these things. So, yeah, of course, it makes people think. I want to take it while I've got it because I don't know if it's going to be here. And, you know, I, I wish that people didn't think like that. We talked about that last time. If you didn't see that episode, make sure you go back and check that one out. But I, I do think Social Security is going to be there. But I do think that is a factor in why people are retiring a little bit later. That makes sense. Um, but that leads us into number three, which health insurance. Ah, uh, yes. Um, another big one. Like pensions, you know, employer-sponsored retiree health benefits I'm pretty much gone. I mean, I think very few employers offer health benefits after you retire. Now you have to pay for that yourself on or your own. <laughs> go on Medicare. And so the thought is, well, if I want to stay covered, I've got to stay working. Which we've actually pointed out before. We, um, I know we've talked about this in episodes past, but Fidelity did a study that showed a 65-year-old retired couple would need over $300,000 just for health care costs. Yeah, and I mean, that's... $300,000. So that's the thing. You see a study like that, $300,000 to provide just health insurance or health care costs for you and your wife or, or husband in retirement. Your spouse. That's your we'll spouse. spouse. We'll say spouse. That's a lot of money. And then you tack on market risk, the concern of running out of money, the loss of guaranteed income in the form of pensions. Of course, people want to stay working because there's this thought of, can I actually retire comfortably? And I see why when you start adding up all the negative news out there that it makes sense why people it gets are scary. It does. You know, it, it does get scary, but we've seen it happen. We know people are retiring. I mean, the average age is 61. That's <laughs> according to Gallup. Still, yeah. <laughs> um, but the last reason why I believe, you know, people are retiring a little bit later is I think people are generally healthier today than they were before. Despite all of the, Which is a good sign. you know, the fast food nation and, you know, super size me type things. Remember that movie? Super Size Me, that doc. I don't think I saw the that. The guy ate like McDonald's for, I don't know, I think it was a month or a couple months or I don't even know how long he ate it for, but every day. It's very interesting. Um, huh. Yeah. Might have to check that out. Might have to check that out. This episode is not sponsored by McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the you know, life expectancy has increased. I found a study that showed that life expectancy for men age 65 and older has actually increased 3.7 years since 1985. So, that's good. I have Some no good clue on the statistics for women. It didn't provide it in the study okay. I found. Hey, hey, we know but, you're going to live longer, hopefully. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so people are, you know, they are living longer, and I think that's going to create that thought of, you know, let's just delay retirement longer as well. Because they're healthier. Yeah. They're like, yeah, I feel good. I guess I could keep working. Why not? Why not? I think that also there's a lot less physicality in work these days. I mean, not just actual physical labor, but... I mean, you have people who are still working from home. I mean, you don't even have to leave your house. Look, I don't care what you say. This is a physical job for those people. <laughs> this is as physical as it gets. You know, <laughs> sitting in an office. I, 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 I see what you you're saying. You do have to physically walk to the office, though, That's I guess. True. That's different. You're not doing it from, like, you know, the couch. I didn't, I didn't have to build the office, though. Oh, so, true, you know. true. But I, I agree with that. I think now that we are more of a service industry, service society, that it is easier for people just to continue working without there being a strain on their body. I mean, you think 
how long are you really going to be paving roads or building buildings if your knee's going out? <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's probably going to push you into retirement, whereas you, know, you can roll into an office and or just work from home, like you said. So, um, Kick back on the couch, you know. One thing I'm going to throw in there, though, uh, this is I won't say this is number five, but I'm going to say it's like 4.1 or 4A. Okay. Uh, I think some people actually like their jobs. Oh, right. Yes. Yeah, I, think, I guess that's. I mean, no study ever talks about that, but we talk to people all the time that say, well, I don't know if I ever want to retire. And you ask them why, say, because I love what I do. It's, they, I actually enjoy what I do. There are people out there. This is shocking. I know this is news. Yeah, you never hear this part no, of it. No, people actually do like what they do. They enjoy it. It's stimulating. We've talked about it before of, you know, people who keep working, you know, they are more mentally stimulated because of their surroundings, their, you know, their co-workers, all that their stuff. their brain's actively working. Yeah. I mean, so, that makes sense. So those those four factors, I think, are the reasons why, you know, we've seen this generational shift of people retiring a little bit later. But all of those are personal. They're all based on each individual person. So there's not really one way that if you're watching this, you can think of, well, how can I avoid retiring? Number two later? or number three. Or yeah, whatever. it's, I mean, it really ultimately is going to come down to save early, save as much as you can, uh, invest in a diversified and disciplined portfolio. You know, don't... And maybe find something you like to do. Yeah. I mean, just, you know... It's true, but also uh, plan. You know? uh, yes. I plan. mean, we found that one study that uh, only 42% of workers have actually tried to calculate how much they need to retire. It, uh, less than half the people out there aren't even thinking about it. 58% of people have no clue how much they need to retire. So uh, do those things, and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of you know when retirement is possible for you. And our hope is that you're delaying retirement because you want to and not because you have to. So with that, I'm Jonathan Rankin. And I'm Melissa Rankin. Thank you so much for joining us.